Hey guys, welcome back to BMW Blog and welcome to South Carolina. I'm today with Nate and we, it's a beautiful day, Nate, today. And what are we driving first? We have the all new X5 in the 5.0 e version, which is going to be very exciting to try out because it's got a little bit of upgrades and powers. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that, Horatio. It's a facelift, basically. BMW decided to give it a design refresh. Of course, they do that every three to four years. But I guess the most interesting part about the car, it's not just the design, it's really the technology upgrade because even though it uses the B58 engine, they managed to squeeze a lot more power out of this one. So it makes about 94 horsepower more than the outgoing 45E plug-in hybrid. So that's quite exciting. I believe on the torque side, it's about 73 pounds feet of torque more and uh, that's a total of 516 pounds feet of torque which is quite quite impressive for this car of course it's a combination of the electric motor and the b58 so with that being said we're going to talk about that as we drive the car and see what it does but i guess let's kind of look at the design and see what we like and what we don't like on the car yeah yeah the design i think is a good good upgrade i think it's a little bit cleaner um it still keeps that aggressive uh, the aggressive lines but they're a little smoother, a little cleaner, looks a little bit more modern to me, um, yeah. and definitely keeps that good X5 sporty look to it though. Yeah, so I mean, basically what they decided to update were really the headlights. They have these two light bars now inside. They still call them a, you know, double headlamps, essentially they're LEDs. And then of course the lower front area right here has changed a little bit. Of course you have this large air intakes. So you need that for cooling and for all of that. It looks mm -hmm. quite aggressive. And I guess the other biggest change really that, and something that people complain about, and I'm not extremely happy about, it's really this piano black painted piece right here. BMW said that that gives the car a very premium and luxurious look. I'm not so sure about that. Honestly, I wish this one was more of a matte maybe, same as the contour on the kidney grill. I mean, you can see it looks so yeah, nice there. Exactly. Especially against the the yeah, exactly. The kidney grill matte black looks really great. And if it was continued all the way through, I think that would be a great, great detail. Um, yeah, everyone doesn't like piano back, black. You see all the fingerprints, and I'm guessing on the front you'll see a lot of bug marks, but yeah, we'll find out. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you go to the back, you'll see also a brand new interpretation of the uh, taillights. Mm -hmm. They've changed it quite a bit. It's not a massive change, but they do look a lot more digital, a lot more luxurious, if you'd like. But other than that, it's really your standard BMW X5. I don't feel like they need to change it too much because this it's really the bread and butter of the yep. X lineup. It's a great car in every combination, honestly. Uh, hopefully today we'll also have a chance to drive the X5 M60i, you know, V8 engine. That's always nice. Yes, that would be nice. So, but this B58 is fantastic. It's been really good over the last few years and has been one of my favorites produced. Gotcha. So before maybe we get going, maybe let's take a quick look inside and see what has changed there and then we're going to go for a drive. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so let's take a quick look inside. We're going to talk more about this as we drive and kind of point out the things that we like and don't like. You know, Nate is behind the camera right now. So quickly, right, you have this brand new iDrive 8 and 8.5. So let's see if actually it's updated. So yes, we have 8.5 right now. It's a newer production date, basically. But essentially, it's the same large curve display that you see in other BMWs. Of course, I mentioned it before, it is not ideal. I'm not a huge fan, mostly because you are losing those physical buttons right here and everything has moved into the digital world. It is a little bit better than iDrive 8. Talked about that plenty, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. M Sport steering wheel, it's got the M Sport package on it, so of course you're getting this a little bit more beefed up and nice steering wheel. The other major inside, especially here in the center console, it's the fact that the uh, gear shifter, it's gone and it's been replaced by this toggle shifter. You've seen it in other BMWs as well. It doesn't bother me too much, honestly. I actually kind of like it. It gives it a very clean look. Of course, some of you might have got used to holding your hand on the gear shifter, so it might bother you a bit, but really not a big deal for me. I'm really more concerned about uh, the fact that we lost some of the physical buttons. I drive controller, of course, happy that it's still there because some of the newer BMWs like the X1 and X2 don't really have it. So always, always happy to have it in there because it's easier to control. Other than that, it's your typical BMW X5 cabin. It's quite spacious, of course. It's good for three people traveling. You can easily fit a couple of car seats, no issue there. It is quite premium, quite luxurious. I believe we do have the leather option in this one, perforated leather, which is quite nice. You have this nice wood trim on the dashboard. And then, of course, you can also see here the ambient light, which can be customized. Unfortunately, it's sunny today, so you're not going to be able to see. So that's really it inside. No major changes, of course. I said this car has been selling really well. It's a good looking car. It's a great product, actually. So I don't see the need for BMW to actually change too much. So with that being said, Nate, I think we should uh, 
go for a drive and see because uh, that's probably the most interesting fact especially because we want to see also the electric range and all of that the efficiency so let's go for a drive all right Nate so here we are time to drive the X drive 50e the new x5 facelift I'm gonna be driving it first and then you can take over and tell me your driving impressions and then we can talk about the car so maybe let's recap once again right so an upgraded drivetrain basically a lot more power from the b58 and i think the electric motor makes about 194 horsepower a total of 483 i believe so that's quite significant almost 100 horsepower more than the outgoing model so the question is if we're gonna feel that or not wow yeah definitely it gets, uh -huh. it's got a little bit of get up and go some nice kick right there so yeah we're not even in sport mode so let's maybe switch it up to sport that's always going to give you the highest settings tighter chassis and all of that the suspension and of course the sound of a b58 is a lot better we're going to try the hybrid mode as well we're going to try the electric one and then see how it does but honestly at the first glance it just drives like an x5 of yeah, course you can feel that additional power i mean i was just <laughs> not even paying attention to the speed limit because it just takes off and you can see i mean in let me go into let's say you know second gear you can hear that sound let's give it a shot right i mean i mean look at that oh i mean that b58 is just great oh, man, such a great engine honestly it's probably the best engine that bmw makes i've, I've talked about it quite a bit in the past it's used across multiple multiple models especially the m performance ones yeah it's, it's one of my so favorite good. engines yeah. in the x3 m40i um so having it in the x5 with the hybrid to kind of help with the a little bit extra weight and size um, i think will be a, a good combination yeah and yeah so we talked about that we talked about the torque i think it's 516 which is about 74 75 more than in the outgoing 45v so i don't know if it's tangible if you can really feel it maybe you will a little bit but I guess the combination of the power and the torque does make the car feel more lively, I would say, a lot more spirited. You know, it's got that, uh, it's got that, that, that DNA or the BMW DNA that you don't usually feel it in a, in a SUV, really, you know. So that's yeah. one nice thing about the car. Well, you were talking about the interior, and I feel like, you know, BMW is really kind of got into a good groove with them. This X5 isn't changed too much on the inside in here. It's comfortable. Um, it, but it's still, you know, bolstered well for being, you know, on those perfor performance driving in the corners. Um, and it, it's just a, a beautiful look. I really like what they've done with some of like the air vents. They've minimalized that down. Um, there is a lot of removing of some buttons and things, which yeah. is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's trying to go for that modern, more clean look. So. And I mentioned it before, you know, it's always nice to have the knobs to adjust the AC. Uh, but I guess in their defense, you know, I have actually talked about this in my IX review. The truth is, you know, that I usually adjust the temperature maybe once or twice during a long drive. So I don't really go and play around with the different temperature settings and the vents and all of that. So it's not like you're constantly trying to adjust it. So maybe in that case, it's not a big deal. But of course, people still like the feeling of, you know, just you know, well, turning and twisting. And exactly. And I think that the issue there is that normally what happens is it's a hot day like it is today in yeah. South Carolina where your car is sitting on the road and you jump and it's hot and you just want to quickly just spin it down to cold you know and, yeah. and you can't really do that you have to tap yeah a I mean, it's a little bit easier i mean we're going to show a b-roll here too but it's a little bit easier now with iDrive 8.5 because mm -hmm. in, in iDrive 8 you didn't have this layout it was essentially kind of confusing honestly but right now it's kind of trying to mimic the formal physical layout here yep. so it's a little bit easier <laughs> to adjust it so it's a little trick there uh, but you know still i mean i still feel from uh, i still feel that from an ergonomics perspective it's still quite annoying to do this. I mean, I'm quite tall, I'm 6'2", and I can imagine that somebody with shorter, you know, arms might have a hard time constantly reaching this. I honestly don't even like to do this because of the fingerprints and all of that, so I constantly try to just use the iDrive control as much as possible, to be honest. But yeah, that's kind of the interior, so we're not gonna dwell too much on it. I guess we wanna know more about how it drives, really. I mean, it's an X5. We said in the intro video as well, it's really the bread and butter of the brand. I feel like, you know, it's the, it's the one car that redefined BMW, in my opinion, right? When it, they yes. first came out with the X5. And every generation of X5 that they've done, it's gotten better and better than the previous one. Even though they're kind of just tweaking it and making small <laughs> adjustments, really never an evolutionary product from one to the next one. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice punch right there. I mean, you got to be careful because you're getting in trouble quickly with this one. <laughs> All right, so here are some back roads. Little 
chance to also test the air suspension in the car. Of course, it's always nice to have that in an SUV. I mean, I enjoy it quite a bit in the iX and also in the X7. You yeah. Know, it's, what do you expect from it, right? Honestly, I don't spend too much time on the air suspension. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It offers a very comfortable and plush ride. Of course, it's not going to give you that stiffness that you're getting from, you know, the coil spring suspension. But honestly, you can adjust the Sport Plus and you're getting a little bit more um, rigidity probably in the chassis and suspension. All right, Nay, so here are some curvy roads, right? I mean, let's try a little bit of dynamic driving. Yeah, Those okay. are some really nice roads, actually. I was say, it's beautiful down here in Greenville. Um, we should be filming probably wow. the scenery a little bit. Today, <laughs> probably. It's absolutely beautiful. But uh, the air suspension, let's see if it keeps it nice and, yes. It, Keeps it level through these corners. Trying to get a feel of the car, not to get in trouble too quickly, but oh, this is so nice. The roads are unbelievable. I mean, great brakes, honestly, you have the M Sport brakes. They're quite useful, especially the, since they come with the M Sport package. You do get a little bit of a body roll, right? I mean, you feel that, right? Of course, it's a big car with a hybrid system in it. Yeah, and honestly, you know, being a, having the battery pack in there, it's got a nice distribution, a nice balance in the car, and you can feel that even though you have that body roll, you can feel like you can still push the car quite a bit. I mean, we're not going to try to kill ourselves here, but... And we got know, cameras in the back. Exactly. You have things flying, so we don't <laughs> want to do that too much either. But very, very nice drive, honestly. You can definitely feel the additional power compared to the 45V. It's been maybe a couple of years since I've driven the 45V, so maybe... I don't recall it fully how it drives, yeah. but I can I, I can probably tell you really that you will feel that extra power and extra torque when needed. Yeah, I always felt like the 45E was more geared and set up to be kind of like a commuter car and get that high fuel economy. Where with this, I feel like it's more of like a, a performance enhancement to give it a little bit more of that lower end torque, you know? Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean, we're not gonna be able to really test the electric range because the way that we drive today, it's really geared towards more like driving dynamics, right? So we're not here to squeeze the best efficiency out of the car, but I guess they rate the car at about 40 miles on the EPA, which is a little bit better than the uh, previous generation uh, 45E. I don't remember, honestly, if the battery pack, it's the same capacity, uh, but if it's different, then we can actually put that on the screen and mention it, but so nice. It turns in nicely. I mean, the steering, of course, it's not as direct and engaging as you would get maybe in a sedan or even maybe like an M Performance car, but it's still quite nice. This is still a soccer mom SUV, right? I mean, something that you usually take your kids to school versus going on some of these curvy roads in South Carolina. Are we in South or North right now? I think we're still in South. South Carolina. Uh, those are some really nice roads on us. Yeah, this is a uh, beautiful, beautiful drive. Yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, curvy roads, once again, car is quite engaging for what it is. I don't think a lot of people end up driving on some of those roads and really push the car. Not sure if you're going to get car sick in the back. I mean, that's <laughs> always an issue driving like this. So far, we feel okay up front, but I guess if you travel with someone, you might not want to try to push this car too hard. Oh, that's a nice Z4. Enjoying the drive yeah. today. And once again, we're not going to try to spin the tires too much, but it's always nice to have additional stickiness coming from the tires if needed yes of course it's honestly the scenery is beautiful like, yeah. it's like you're just don't even want to go too fast just want to kind of like enjoy it All right now let's try something else. let's put it into the hybrid mode right so let's go a little bit more on the chill side and see how the transition is from hybrid to definitely gasoline. a lot quieter yeah all of a sudden right i mean just you don't hear that six cylinder anymore I guess I want to see that transition, right? So if I, all right, so here we go. So very, very smooth, honestly. I mean, you can barely feel the transition from all electric to essentially the gasoline, which is quite nice. I know that if we go into the electric mode, there is a power reduction and we can try that as well too. Let's see how it feels on these roads. So maybe we're going to all electric. I guess you can configure that. So right now it's all electric mode. According to the spec sheet, like I said, I think it's getting about 50% of the overall power. I think the electric motor makes 194. I mean, honestly, it just drives like an electric car then. I mean, there is no difference really. Yeah. It feels like the power is adequate. You don't really need more for these type of roads. Of course, if you're on the highway, you might want to just go into the hybrid or 
full gasoline, but just a nice serene ride this way. It's yeah, and with electric sound too, right? Yeah, exactly. A little bit of electric sound to give you something to to feed off of. Um, and the 40 range, 40 mile range gives you a, you know plenty of range for your day to day driving. You know, so you could go electric all day if you if you want for most typical drivers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if your commute is not that long, it definitely makes sense, especially if you can charge it at home or at the office. You might not even have to actually use the gasoline engine at all. Uh, I think that charging from zero to 80 or 10 to 80, I think it takes about three hours and something on the uh, level two charging station. Of course, you cannot fast charge this one. And if you do normal 120, I think that's gonna take quite a few hours. I think the one thing that I read in the spec sheet, it's about 18 hours to fully charge. So that's you know quite, quite long. Yeah, so yeah, nice and chill. Right? Yeah. It's like it's like a we're just going for a stroll here. We're not really testing cars today. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious to see what you think, right? Because I drive a lot of BMWs, so maybe maybe sometimes I'm biased towards some of them. A little bit. Yeah. You tend to lean towards the more luxury comfort side yeah, of things too. I absolutely do, absolutely do. I have an IX at home and uh, I do enjoy the ride. Honestly, the air suspension is great. I love the space inside. I just love the higher position in the driving position you're getting old i am getting old that's <laughs> for sure and that one m doesn't get a lot of you know drive time yeah absolutely nice All right let me switch over to sport right now i do a little bit more dynamic driving and i'll let you drive it a little bit and yeah see what you think so. these roads are amazing oh, man, it's amazing roads i mean i'm so jealous because coming from chicago it's all flat you know it's just like oh that's another bmw press car Look at this, I mean, it's so nice. I mean, it just turns nicely. I mean, of course, you gotta, you know, maybe be a little bit more uh, aggressive on the brakes because it's not your M car. They can just turn in easily, so you gotta be careful a little bit more. But yeah, pretty nice drive. I have a feeling that if you do this with passengers in the backseat, you will get them car sick in no time. Oh, of course. Yeah, so nice punch. I mean, honestly, of course, you can also downshift an option if you want to be more on the sports, I don't want to let the car do the upshifting or downshifting for you. You can do that. But honestly, I have to say, this is a really nice car. Honestly, I don't see why somebody would pick any other X5. Of course, the X5 M60i, it's nice, right? V8, 4.4 liter, sounds great. But I don't know, this is just nice. It's like a car to have, you know? It's yeah, it's this is the all round type vehicle you would want. Yeah. It's got plenty to get up and go. So when you get up on the freeway, you're not merging at a slower speed. You don't feel like you need to floor it to get off that, up to that speed. Um, yet you have all that fuel economy from the hybrid system. So, I mean, I think this is a great all around vehicle. Yeah, I mean, of course the pundits will say, oh, it's a little bit heavier, you know, because of the battery pack. So I'm gonna get a 4EI, but then I'm thinking like, okay, you're getting the 4EI, but you're not going to do any drag race. You're not going to time your laps really. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you're not gaining much by having the 40i. I feel like this is the right choice, honestly, when it comes to the X5. So yeah, I would agree. Yeah, so that's my that's my overall opinion. I mean, I I do enjoy the car. There is not much to say from my point of view, but let's pull over and I'm gonna let you. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's plenty. So, how is it? That's good. I mean, that was only about half throttle, and it's it was plenty of of speed. You know, I mean. I'm sure with with this hybrid system, if I floored it, it'll be you know plenty for anyone's anyone's needs. Oh, that B58 sounds so good though. Really nice engine. Oh yeah. Of course, there's a bit of a fake sound. You know, that <laughs> it is that. a little fake. We've been doing that for quite some time. I remember when they came out with the fake sound, everybody was like, "Oh my God, blast for me, blast for me!" But honestly, you know, I just try to have some sound than yeah. not having any. Exactly, and it's kind of nice with the, with the hybrid, you know, when you go into hybrid mode and you're just wanting to, to cruise, it, it has all that sound deadening and it won't pump yeah. it through then, and then it's, you know, a nice quiet drive. Exactly. Speaking of cruising, we're not going to go on the highway, but I do have to mention that it comes with a lot of driver assistance features. It has this highway assistant that you can spec the car with, essentially hands-free driving, which is quite nice. and. Um, that's really useful, especially if you're doing long trips on a highway. I find that to be extremely useful, especially my iX. It's a lot more relaxing, of course. I do enjoy yeah. the 
departure, the distance control and all of that. It's always nice in case you're not paying attention, you know, so. So one thing I've noticed while driving around in electric mode here is the 21 inch wheels and uh, performance tires kind of give a little bit of the road ni noise through. Um, so you, you kind of hear, hear that noise constantly, um, yeah. which isn't ideal for, for everyday driving, but I mean, I think if there are some nice all season tires on here, it'd be quite, a little bit quieter even. For sure, and I always tell people that as much as I enjoy really big wheels on cars because they look cool, right? I mean, that's the idea of really <laughs> big wheels and tires. Um, for better comfort, especially for cars like this, I think the 20 inch are just the nice sweet spot. I would say, you know, you're getting still some beefy tires and wheels, but at the same time, they're probably a little bit quiet, a little bit maybe less harsh on the road, I would say. Yeah, exactly. So you're not gonna, I mean, you can feel it right now, even with the air suspension, uh, and we're not even in the sport mode, you do feel the impurities. Yeah, so tell me what you think about the steering feedback, because, um, you know, I know we care about that more than we should, but I don't <laughs> know if people really care about that in an SUV. Yeah, exactly, we, we definitely care about it, but then again, with me owning an E46 and you owning a 1M, I mean, we're used to, we want that hydraulic steering feel, and you know, obviously you're not gonna get it in this car. Yeah. Um, but with the bigger wheels though, I mean, one thing is though, yeah, it may be a little bit noisier and, and you hear the road, but you feel a little bit more. I mean, I do feel a little bit of the, uh, the impurities and a little bit more of the bumps. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel, I mean, I would say it, it holds its line a little too well. I, I feel like I'm not doing much more than just letting it go yeah. um, but I did notice back there when you're driving a little bit quicker that uh, the rear wheel steering if, if is just it lets you just kind of you know it's almost intuitive when you want to change lanes yeah you know you don't have to be as uh, assertive with it it just kind of oh I want to change lanes and it nicely just kind of moves on over at speed yeah all right that sounds good um, I guess space and all of that we've talked about that plenty of cargo space uh, I believe because of the BEV, there is a little bit less space than in the normal X5. We can leave that on the screen as well. But yeah. overall, it's your typical X5. But you lifted up the, I mean, you at least had some access underneath that rear rear deck. So Yeah, least, there is a little bit of storage there, yeah. I guess, where you can so store. So it's not completely gone. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I guess we're going to head back right now. We're going to be swapping into some more cars. I guess if people don't know, this is a very yep. long day for us. We're testing quite a few cars. It's called the BMW North America Test Fast. There are about 110 cars. This is really the first one. It feels like we <laughs> driving forever. One down, 109 to go. Exactly. But um, <laughs> yeah, this was the review of the BMW X5 50. Once again, I always suggest, you know, if you want to buy the car, go to the dealership, try the car. If you have a chance maybe to get it for a day, that's even better because you can really test it to your preference. I always like to have the cars for about a week because then I can focus on the efficiency and all of that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with this one. When I get the car as a press car, I'll try to see if that 40 miles EPA is really accurate. I'll try the charging component as well because now we know how it drives. And then, of course, I want to drive it actually in Chicago, you know, downtown especially where there's a lot of traffic and, you know, to see the turn radios and how it actually handles. Yeah, that's for my Chicago side. Chicago roads. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> Chicago roads because that's really going to put the air suspension to work. They're really not great. I always say if you want to test your suspension, the air suspension, or any other suspension, you should go to Chicago because <laughs> they're so terrible. So many potholes, unbelievable. But yeah, that makes for a for a really fun driving experience sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Horatio, here's here's the golden question: Is this the X5 model you would purchase? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I love the 45e honestly, and this one it's more refined, more powerful. I would say a nicer design. Some people would disagree. I do like the new headlights and taillights. I know not everybody was keen on them. And of course, the M Sport package is a little bit tricky. You know, maybe a little bit not what I want. But overall, I do like this facelift on the car. Mm -hmm. So you're getting nicer design, I would say. Still seeing premium materials inside. More power, a little bit more electric range. I mean, honestly, this is the best X5 that you can buy today. Of course, there is no other X model with a plug-in hybrid in the US. So essentially, we're not getting the X3 plug-in hybrid here. When there is no X7 plug-in hybrid, there is no X6 for sure. So you only have one option, really. And this is a very good option, honestly. And 
I always tell people go drive the car see for yourself but if you compare it to the 40i absolutely this one of course if I were to compare it with the uh, M60i maybe some occasions I would love the V8 engine it sounds great it's a lot more powerful it's got an M engine in it that's exactly why we want to test that car today because it's it's got that new S68 which is used in the X5M X6M the next M5 in the XM pretty much everywhere right now so it does sound great it's powerful but I don't know for 99% of the of my use case I will go with this one there awesome. we go thanks Rachel cool. well guys I guess thanks for watching for this review if you have any comments regarding the car please leave them in the comments below of course we have a lot more things that we discovered you know as we were driving so we can share that through the comments and don't and go anywhere. subscribe and subscribe yes <laughs> we almost never say that because we assume that people just do it but it's, we just assume you're already subscribed exactly so as always thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one